Hello everybody. This is the lecture number three of module four. In module four, I was discussing about the axial vibration and torsional vibration. Both the type of vibrations have similar kind of differential equations. So solution procedures also have similarity. However, I discussed it independently and uh, discussed how the solution of a complete vibration problem including the free vibration and force vibration that is when you encounter a differential equation of non-homogeneous nature that is the characteristic of force vibration you have to get the solution in two parts for linear system one is homogeneous solution and another is particular integral so that thing i have discussed and with the help of torsional oscillation and axial vibration of the bar so today i will discuss some typical problems that are encountered in axial and torsional vibrations frequently and uh, these are the exercise problem and i will give the complete solution for that now three problems i have selected here first one is natural frequencies and modes of axial vibration of bar whose one end is elastically restrained i have discussed in that connection different boundary condition that may come across for axial vibration of the bar that is fixed free condition or free free condition there may be fixed fixed condition also but here this is a non classical boundary condition where the one end is fixed and other end is elastically restrained that is a spring is attached however we will take the linear spring that is force displacement relationship of the spring follows the linearity secondly the free vibration response of a bar which is uniformly stressed and then released in the second type of problem i will discuss again the axial vibration of bar but in that case the bar is uniformly stressed and then release so it will have a initial displacement configuration that will assume at t is equal to 0 as a function of x then subsequently we will find the free vibration solution completely considering the contribution of different modes and here i want to show that as you go or as you increase the number of modes the contribution towards the response become lesser and lesser so that you will understand with the numerical example that i have selected for this second problem in the third problem we will discuss the torsional vibration response of a shaft subjected to a rectangular pulse that means here we have to solve a non-homogeneous equation for torsional vibration subjected to a torque which is of the form of rectangular pulse for certain duration and after that duration the torque is released that means the shaft is free from any external disturbance so in that case after the pulse ceases to act then the shaft will be subjected to free vibration so the solution here in the third case will be obtained in two parts first is the complete solution that is homogeneous and particular integral for the shaft subjected to a pulse of uniform pulse and then the free vibration response when the pulse is released pulse is withdrawn okay so let us discuss one by one so first problem is a bar of length l is taken here you can see the figure the length of the bar is l and area of cross section is uniform throughout the length e is the modulus of elasticity rho is the density of the material so mass per unit length is m rho into a that is mass per unit length rho into a that is if the unit of mass is kg then it will be kg per meter so it is mass per unit length so we have the 
equation of motion for the axial vibration of bar. Neglecting the damping, we can write it AE del square u by del x square equal to m del square u by del t square, where u is a displacement of the bar which is a function of x and t. And for free vibration, we can easily assume that in the time domain the motion is harmonic and it follows a specific vibration pattern subjected to a natural frequency, subject to a vibration at particular natural frequency. So ux is the mode shape, mode shape or sometimes it is called the Eigen function also. So assuming that this uxt equal to capital ux into sin omega t where omega is the natural frequency. For continuous system we have infinite number of natural frequencies so we will see in the solution uh, finally we will get uh, infinite number of roots which will give you the different eigenvalues and uh, infinite number of eigenvalues and corresponding to each eigenvalue we will get the eigen shape. Now substituting this in this equation if you substitute this you will find that when I take the uh, double derivative of u with respect to time minus omega square sin omega t will be coming. So here minus m omega square ux function is there and both sides you will get sin omega t sin omega t. So sin omega t is ultimately cancelled from both sides of the equation. So therefore we can write del square u by del x square plus m omega square by a e u x capital u is the mode shape function. So here our target is to find the mode shape function ux ok. Now simplifying this that this term can be assumed as a beta square. So now we will write this equation in this form. So this is the differential equation that we have to solve ok. Now solution of this equation is well known to us. This gives two harmonic functions sin and cos beta because the characteristic equation has roots which are complex in nature. So therefore when I raise a complex number with exponential then I will get the sin and cosine term. So obviously after collecting the coefficient we can write this ux equal to c sin beta x plus d cos beta x. Now c and d are constants of integration that can be found from the boundary conditions. Now here if I see the bar, let me draw here the straight bar whose one end is spring supported. Spring has the constant k and uh, the bar has other properties area material properties E and then rho is also density. Length of the bar is L. So here at this fixed end we have u is equal to 0. But here what will be the boundary condition? Boundary condition will be here the force that is produced here due to stress, axial stress should be balanced by the spring force. So at this point at x is equal to L this strain is del u by del x into E is the stress and multiplied by A will get the force and this is equal to the elastic restoring force which will be acting in opposite direction so minus k u. So all these quantities are calculated at x is equal to L because this is at the free end of the bar and the x is measured from this. So this is the positive direction of x ok. Now here if I substitute that uh, u as capital U x sin omega t I will get ultimately a e del u by del x evaluated at x is equal to l equal to minus k u 
x is equal to l ok so now we require the derivative of this function so derivative of this function is now obtained you can see the derivative del u by del x of course it is a capital u only a function of x is equal to c beta cos beta x plus d minus because derivative of cosine is the minus sign so minus d beta sin beta x now utilizing this boundary condition so we can write the of course the first boundary condition that is if i put x is equal to 0 here if i put x is equal to 0 in this equation then the first boundary condition gives because of fixed end it is u is equal to 0 that means capital u is equal to 0 so first boundary condition will give you d is 0 so that is the condition first boundary condition gives so this result if i utilize here this term has no meaning because d is 0 ok so now del u by del x is only c beta cos beta x so therefore utilizing this boundary condition here we can write that a e c beta cos beta x and instead of x we will write l so cos beta l equal to minus minus k u so minus k u at x is equal to l so c is there so c sin beta l so we get this equation and you can see this uh, term some c is cancel from both sides and now we can write it like that a e beta equal to minus k tan beta l so for convenience i multiplied both the sides by l so that means you are getting here k l by a e and here we are left with beta l tan beta l so this is the transcendental equation or characteristic equation frequency equation whatever you call that have to be solved frequency equation that have to be solved and solution will yield you the multiple value of beta l so ultimately from this solution we will get beta l n and n may varies from 1 to up to infinity so corresponding to each beta we will get this uh, natural frequency omega and then for each omega we can get a particular u okay now utilizing this frequency equation now there are different methods available for solving since there are multiple roots multiple natural frequencies will be obtained but as you know that the fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency which most of the engineering design will rely so we will uh, determine the fundamental frequency and this is the most important for a designer now obviously you can write a computer program on that using MATLAB or you can write a uh, program in C language or C++ or Fortran whatever may be there are various methods available say Newton option method then your bracketing and bisection root bisection method now here for the demonstration in the class I will take the example of graphical solution ok so let us take the diameter of the rod is 50 mm length is 2.5 meter modulus of elasticity is 2 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter square and area of cross section is 1963.5 millimeter square then mass of the rod is rho into a it is coming as 15.41 kg per meter so a is now 392.7 into 10 to the power 6 newton as given the spring constant as 314.16 into 10 to the power 6 newton per meter and length is 2.5 meter kl becomes this 70 785.4 into 10 to the power 6 newton so in this equation the constant term that is minus kl by a so minus kl by a now you can see this term if i evaluate this is minus 785.4 
and A is 392.7. In both the cases, the exponent 10 to the power 6 is there. So, automatically this will be cancelled. This ratio is 2. Okay. So, therefore, we get a equation like that 10 beta L is equal to minus 2 by beta L. So, this equation we have to be solved. That means here KL by A ratio is 2. For other KL by A ratio, the nature of the solution will be or solution of the frequency equation will be different. Okay. Now, here I will adopt a graphical method that I will illustrate. So, graphical solution 10 beta L equal to minus 2 by beta L. This is the function. So, I assumed one function is 10 beta L. So, F1 equal to 10 beta L. So, F1 is a function of beta L. Then another function I will assume the right hand side expression. So, F2 is that function F2 beta L equal to minus 2 by beta L. So, you can see these two functions F1 and F2 will have the same value when they intersect. If I plot it graphically, then if I can find the point of intersection, it will give us the root. So, you can see the 10 beta L is actually have many unbounded value at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, etc. So, at this position, this will have very high value. And in the range 0 to pi by 2, if you search the root, actually you will not find any root. In the second portion, pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2, there is a possibility that you can get one root. So, the graph is drawn here uh, from the region say pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 and you can see that this is the graph of 10 beta L and this is uh, minus 2 by beta L. So, this is the intersection point and the intersection point is found from the graph drawn in Excel is 2.47. So, therefore, omega is equal to beta divided by A by ml square. Now, if I take L outside this root square root sign, then it is beta by L. So, beta by L is nothing but 2.47. So, substituting this uh, 2.47 into A is 392.7 into 10 to the power 6 divided by mass is 15.41 kg per meter and length is 2.5 square and whole thing is under root. So, I have given an exponent 0.5. So, after numerical calculations, you will get the first frequency here is 4988 radian per second and if you convert into kilohertz, that will be 794 hertz. So, that means this is the fundamental natural frequency. fundamental natural frequency. Okay. Other frequency can also be obtained, uh, but graphical method will be cumbersome. So, in that case, the numerical methods have to be adopted. Okay. Now, let us take a second problem. In the second problem, we take a uniform bar of length L. So, this is the bar of length L. You can see here one end is fixed and cross section is uniform. The length of the bar is L. A is the area of cross section, E is the modulus of elasticity of the material and rho is the density. Now here what happens? The bar is given an extension. The extension is uniform throughout the length. So, it is extended up to L naught. So, initial length was L and it is extended up to L naught. So, therefore, the distribution of this stretching over the length L can be written as L naught minus L divided by L into x. So, this is the condition when the vibration motion starts. So, at t is equal to 0, this remain as the initial configuration of the bar and velocity is taken 0. 
So, we are required to find what will be the resulting motion. Okay. Now, in that case, it is required to find the free vibration equation. So, free vibration equation we assume that the solution of the equation whether it is force vibration or free vibration according to model superposition principle we have to assume that u x t k small u as a function of x and t equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n capital U i x eta i t. So, eta i is a generalized coordinate time dependent coordinate and u i x is the shape function okay, or mode shape function. So, now this solution can be substituted in this equation of motion and it can be decoupled using the orthogonality condition that is known to us. Okay. So, substituting the series y x t in the governing differential equation and integrate with respect to x from limit 0 to L and make use of orthogonality condition. So, this is the original equation that you are getting. Here we have to substitute the u x t summation the series u i x eta i t and it is summed over n -th term I have written, but actually it may extend to infinity also infinite number of terms. But the theoretically infinite number of terms are possible practically you have to take a finite number of terms. So, therefore, I have written n. So, if you substitute this, then you can get an equation involving summation. So, you will get a equation involving summation and that equation you utilize this for any mode i. Say, if I take the only the first term u i x eta i t this equation has to also satisfy this term also satisfies this differential equation. So, therefore, substituting this here we will write this ok. For any mode we can get this relation a e d square u i x divided by d x square minus m omega i square u i x, but how minus omega i square m omega i square is coming because m is there already and eta t will assume a harmonic function because it is a free vibration case. So, therefore, free vibration at frequency of omega i. So, therefore, minus m omega i square is term is coming. Okay. So, after substituting this and uh, summation term will be there and then integrate integrate the resulting equation from 0 to L that is the limit of integration with respect to x and make use of orthogonality condition because there will be involved summation lot of terms will be there because you are taking infinite number of terms in the series. But only the one term will exist and other terms product will vanish when i is equal to not j when i is equal to j only the term is will be existing and this is because of the orthogonality condition that we have proved earlier An orthogonality condition is with respect to mass here mass is taken as a constant u j x u k x equal to 1 when j is equal to k else 0 otherwise 0 this can also be represented by Kronecker delta if I take a constant mass then u j x u k x d x 0 to l can be written as Kronecker delta j k. So, that means when j is equal to k this value is 1 and when j is not equal to k that is 0. Okay. So, this is because the mode shape function u j x at jth mode is normalized with respect to mass. So, what is the normalized mode shape function that we have taken root over 2 by ml sin in that case the mode shape function you can see twice i minus 1 by 2 l j minus 1 2 l uh, pi x. So, this is the mode shape function. So, now utilizing this mode shape function 
that mode shift function has been used so that mass normalization is done and therefore result of this integration is 1 for i is equal to j. So this ultimately considering this orthogonality condition and integrating it you will get a simple differential equation just like a single degree freedom system. So eta i double dot t plus omega i square eta i t equal to 0 where i is equal to 1 2 etc. Solution of this equation is well known to us. So eta i t equal to a i sin omega i t plus b i cos omega i t. a i b i are constants of integration. constraints of integration that have to be found from the boundary conditions actually here because it is a time function so initial condition okay now initial conditions are given in the problem because the bar is uniformly stressed so at t is equal to 0 the condition that is u x naught t is 0 here we obtain that L naught by L divided by L into X ok. So that was our initial condition and initial velocity u x 0 equal to 0. So these are the initial condition. This initial condition you have to apply here ok. Now writing the complete expression so now you will get u x t equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n root over 2 by ml sin 2i minus 1 by 2l pi x a i sin omega i t b i cos omega i t. Remember that here i is equal to 1, 2, 3 and extend up to infinity theoretically. Equivalently here you can see when you substitute i is equal to 1 then what you are getting pi x by uh, sin pi x by 2l ok. When you are substituting i is equal to 2, you are getting sin 3 pi x by 2l. When you are substituting i is equal to 3, then you are getting that sin 5 pi x by 2l. So what does it mean? I can write in a simple way that only for odd integers that u x t that summation has to be with only odd integer because sin of sin of say pi is 0, sin of 2 pi is 0, sin of 3 pi is 0. So when the this quantity will be integral value otherwise if it is sin pi by 2, sin 3 pi by 2 it will be plus minus 1 like that. So therefore I can alternatively written i is equal to 1, 3, 5 odd integers 1, 3, 5 etc in the index of summation. So now I write u x t equal to summation i is equal to 1 3 5 up to n and here you can write large number of terms also. So root over 2 by ml sin i pi x by 2 l into this is the solution of the homogeneous uh, equation in time domain. So I have written here a i sin omega i t plus b i cos omega i t. Now here a i b i are the constants of integration that have to be found out ok. The approach for finding out the constant of integration is again to make use of orthogonality condition. So at t is equal to 0 we get u x 0 equal to put t is equal to 0 you will get this velocity this is the displacement and this is the velocity. If I put t is equal to 0 at the displacement equation I will get this u x 0 equal to root over 2 by ml sin i pi x by 2 l b i. Why a i is not there because a i is found to be 0 from this equation. From the velocity equation if you substitute t is equal to 0 you will get a i to be 0. So ai equal to 0. So therefore the displacement equation now becomes at t is equal to 0 equal to 
summation i is equal to 1 3 5 we have written the summation for odd integers into n root over 2 by ml sin i pi x by 2l bi that is the constant of integration but this initial displacement has a value which is l naught minus l divided by l into x okay so we have to find out bi because this is under the summation term so what i will do i will multiply both sides by another function say i multiply this both side multiply both sides by sin j pi x by 2l another mode shape function okay so mode shape function i am taking with the mass normalized function so we are doing this and then we have to carry out the integration using the orthogonality condition so this is done here multiply the two equation actually one equation directly gives a i equal to zero so you need not worry about that the second equation the displacement equation you multiply both sides by this another mode shape function say phi k x equal to root over 2 ml sin k pi x by 2 l here above two equation means displacement and velocity equation at t is equal to 0 so this velocity equation will give you a i equal to 0 that we have written earlier the displacement equation now after multiplying this it is becoming the integration 0 to l summation i is equal to 1 to 1 3 5 up to n at term root over 2 by ml sin i pi x by 2 l into another mode shape function that i have taken so root 2 by ml sin k pi x by 2 l b i dx and on that side this was the our initial displacement so it is multiplied again by mode shape function so root 2 by ml is coming outside and sin k pi x by 2 l dx also multiply by m for convenience so that we can directly see the orthogonality condition that we have derived so also multiply by m such that orthogonality condition that appears in both sides and you can easily apply this so after doing this operations you will get bk equal to root over 2 by ml into m 0 to l l naught minus l divided by l x sin k pi x by 2 l into dx because here when i combine this these two these two are the ith mode and this is jth mode kth mode so if i combine this and then a multiplier m is there and then integrated 0 to l dx obviously the result is 1 when i is equal to k otherwise 0 so therefore we apply this orthogonality condition and we ultimately get this left hand side as bk and right hand side remains as this integral that have to be evaluated okay so evaluation of integral is done you can see here this is the integral that have to be evaluated consists of two function x sin k pi x by 2l dx okay so integration by parts so if i take this is the first function and this is the second function so the first function into integration of second function integration of second function gives the coefficient 2l by k pi into cos k pi x by 2l and the limit is 0 to l plus plus sign will come because minus minus will be uh, plus so here we are getting plus 2l by k pi differentiation of first function is 1 and integration of this is cos k pi x by 2l dx and this coefficient is coming here as a result of integration okay so after integration of this we get this is a term is 4l square divided by k square pi square sin k pi x by 2l limit 0 to l and this was already evaluated so now after substituting the limit you will get that function 
uh, that term vanishes and here it will be existing only for odd integers so therefore we are writing like that uh, this is root 2 by ml into m l naught minus l divided by l into 4 l square k square pi square minus 1 k minus 1 divided by 2 so now k may vary from 1 2 3 etc so therefore we can get alternatively plus sign or minus sign so final result is this you can take it uh, inside this and we are getting 32 l divided by m into m l naught minus l divided by k square pi square into minus 1 k minus 1 by 2 okay so here we are substituting bk what we obtain so bk is substituted here you can directly see it so 32 l will go inside the square root because this is also under the square root so ultimately we will get square root of 64 and this is 8 and other terms as l naught minus l divided by k square here index is changed so i square pi square and this is there minus i into k minus 1 by 2 sin i pi x by 2 l cos omega i t so this is the complete solution considering the initial displacement that is bar is having initial displaced configuration which is l naught minus l divided by l into x okay now let us give a numerical example take a bar of 25 mm by 4 mm cross section and 1 meter length and made of steel density is 7850 kg per meter cube modulus of elasticity, elasticity is e equal to 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square uniformly stressed to 1.25 meter calculate the resulting displacement at t is equal to 1 second so here i want to specifically demonstrate the contribution of each mode towards the total response so here i will consider summation of few terms few modes but one can extend it also so given l is equal to 1 meter l naught is equal to 125 centimeter area is 100 millimeter square then uh, we are getting mass equal to 0.785 kg per meter so natural frequency omega i is equal to beta i root over a e by m where beta i is equal to i pi by 2 l now here i is taken as 1 3 the odd integers so therefore we are taking omega 1 as this pi by 2 root over a e by m l square and uh, this value is 7928 radian per second we have calculated this constant so therefore you can calculate and this is unit is radian per second 7928 radian per second and when it is converted to hertz and uh, this is a large number so we have taken it in kilohertz so 1.261 kilohertz is the first natural frequency then the index is changed to 3 and we get this omega 3 because the second mode has no contribution here so therefore we are taking this omega 3 23785 radian per second and its unit in kilohertz is 3.785 kilohertz then other modes 39640 radian per second 6.308 kilohertz and the last that is mode I have taken the seventh mode 55,496 radian per second that is 8.832 kilohertz from the nature of the expression that we have derived earlier you can see as the number of modes increases so in the denominator you are seeing the mode number square so naturally the displacement magnitude will go on decreasing if you increase the number of modes okay now let us see the displacement so uxt is 8 l naught minus l divided by i square into pi square sin i pi x by 2 l cos omega i t so i have taken the summation expanding this i have written like that so here all the data are known so i is equal to 1 
and here it is 3 and here it is 5 because if I take i is equal to 2 you can see here the 2 by 2 so it will be sine pi and if we substitute at x is equal to l then it will be uh, sin pi so obviously it is 0 similar condition will also arise at i is equal to 4 6 etc so i have not taken any even number of terms in this series so considering only the odd number of terms i have written the series in expanded form and here the summation of three terms are shown you can increase it also now <coughs> substituting the numerical data this is the omega 1 this is omega 3 this is omega 5 and this is omega 7 and these are plus minus are coming because of this index that we have written in the solution so due to this when you substitute proper index then you can get either plus sign or minus sign so therefore we are getting this like that first one is plus and it will be alternative so plus minus again plus again minus like that so considering the numerical data and after calculating this value first term gives the response in millimeter as 3.8458 second term gives the response in millimeter as 1.9922 third term gives the response as 0.6615 and fourth term gives the response whose magnitude is minus 4022 as you increase the number of modes the magnitude will go on decreasing so resulting value is now 2.1129 considering the four number of modes if you consider the higher modes the result may be refined but you can see after certain number of modes there will be no change of uh, magnitude result so that means uh, this number of modes are sufficient okay the last problem that i have taken up to illustrate torsional vibration of a shaft that is shaft is flexible shaft of course it has torsional stiffness as gj the gj is not very high and also not zero so the one end is fixed and other end is free g is the shear modulus so shear modulus here i directly given but once the value of modulus of elasticity is known then you can find the shear modulus as e divided by 2 into 1 plus mu you remember that only two constants elastic constants are independent what are these constant modulus of elasticity young's modulus of elasticity and mu that is the poison ratio other constants can be derived from this okay so the length of the shaft is l now here this force uh, torque time history this is the torque time history there is the external torque and x axis is time and y axis is torque so here a rectangular pulse of magnitude t naught and t naught here numerical value is given 500 newton meter however we will uh, try to obtain the expression in terms of parameter the variable then you can substitute the numerical uh, data and calculate its magnitude or whatever may be so here you can see at the free end the torque is acting but when we consider our differential equation for this is the differential equation for force vibration where the damping is neglected if damping is considered then another extra term will be there in the right hand side so that we have neglected here now the distributed external force now acting only at the free end so therefore it is written using this tau xt equal to t naught into direct delta x minus l this is the direct delta function so direct delta function has the property say any function say phi x 
multiplied by direct delta function at a and if it is integrated minus infinity to plus infinity then result is phi a. So this property is used to find out the generalized force. This right hand side that you see here the tau that is the generalized force in the ith mode ok. So generalized force at the ith mode is nothing but integration of tau xt into phi x. Now here instead of tau we will substitute this t naught so generalized force now becomes t naught phi i l ok now you know that the shaft having this one end fixed and other end free the mode shape function normalized with respect to mass polar mass moment of inertia is again root 2 divided by rho l sin 2i minus 1 divided by 2l into pi x. So this is the mode shape function for torsional vibration of shaft which is having one end fixed other end free ok. Now let us illustrate the procedure only for first mode. So generalized force in the first mode is now this. So after integration using the properties of direct delta function we now get generalized force in the first mode is root over 2 by I L T naught ok. Now since the right hand side is not 0 and having a non-zero finite term which represents the generalized force at the ith mode here of course we are considering the equation for first mode. Eta 1 t function of time and this is the generalized force at the first mode ok. So actually what happens such kind of equation will give you the solution of homogeneous part and particular integral. So particular integral has to be found out and the one of the general approach to find the particular integral to use the Duhamel integral. Particular integral can be found by Duhamel's integral that is h t minus tau into say here tau d tau 0 to t. So what is this h is impulse response function h t is the impulse response function ok. Now impulse response function we have derived for single degree undamped system as sin because we are considering on the first mode sin omega 1 t divided by m omega 1 but m is here 1 so here omega 1. So this is the impulse response function for that ok. So considering this we already derived this equation in first module so therefore I am using this result directly. So theta xt now becomes only because we are considering the first mode so therefore theta xt equal to uh, phi 1 x into eta 1 t eta 1 t gives the complete solution of the time domain equation including the homogeneous and non homogeneous part. So therefore this is the eta 1 t that we have written this is homogeneous part and this is particular integral. We have already found this ok. So therefore utilizing the earlier result and this is the mode shape function sin pi x by 2 l 
for the first mode. Now seeing the nature of the force that is used like that. For finite duration this torque is acting so 0 to say 2 seconds and after that the shaft is free from torque. So therefore from a, a region of T 0 to 2 seconds we have to obtain this response considering the, the forcing term and after T is equal to 2 seconds the shaft is free from external disturbance. So in that case the shaft is subjected to free vibration with the initial condition evaluated at t is equal to 2 second from the earlier response expression. So that will utilize and will split up the response into two parts one is from 0 to 2 second in this region 0 to 2 second and another is after 2 seconds after 2 seconds it will be free vibration ok. So angle of twist at a distance x at instant t is now found as this and the angular velocity at time t is found from the time derivative of this expression and it is found as root over 2 by i l second bracket a1 omega 1 cos omega 1 t minus b1 omega 1 sin omega 1 t plus t naught omega 1 square uh, because we are taking the derivative. So 1 omega 1 come here and therefore omega 1 square will be divided by omega 1. So in the denominator only omega 1 will be there in the derivative term and this term when it is differentiated with respect to time t it will contain sin omega 1 t into mode shape function sin pi x by 2 l. Since at t is equal to 0 both twist angle and angular velocity is 0 we get this twist angle equal to 0 and angular velocity is also 0. So from that two condition we can now write after substituting t is equal to 0 we can write here say theta x 0 root over 2 by i l b1 sin pi x by 2 l and from that expression theta dot 1 equal to root 2 by i l a1 omega 1 sin pi x by 2 l and from that two equation we get a1 b1 equal to 0 ok. Hence for t less than 2 second of course t varies from range of t is this domain of t is this in this region the displacement or the angular displacement or ang twist of the shaft is this. So maximum value of the twist angle can be seen here the cos omega 1 t may be plus minus 1 that is the limit of maximum value. So here when cos omega 1 t is minus 1 then we get this it is equal to root over 2 by i l t naught divided by omega 1 square. So this is the magnitude of the torque maximum value of the torque at x is equal to l in the region 0 to t 0 to 2 second. So this is the value ok. Now at t is equal to 2 second we are interested to calculate because this will provide the or supply the initial conditions for the next region say t greater than 2 second. So at t is equal to 2 second we substitute in this expression the expression for this here and here. Of course this uh, a1 and b1 already is calculated for the uh, first part and it was 0 as was seen ok. But here the free vibration response can be found. So after knowing the condition at this so a1 and b1 are 0 in the first region time region so therefore we are getting this theta and x and using this t is equal to 2 second we can now evaluate theta 1 is equal to root over 2 by il t naught 
divided by omega 1 square 1 minus cos 2 omega 1 sin pi x by 2L. This 2 is coming when we substitute t is equal to 2 second. So similarly theta 1 and theta 1 dot are the initial conditions at t is equal to 2 seconds. So similarly here we are getting root over 2 by I L t naught divided by omega 1 sin 2 omega 1 sin pi x by 2 L. Okay. So now after t is equal to 2 second the response is free vibration. So I am writing this theta x t equal to root over 2 by I L a 1 sin omega 1 t plus b 1 cos omega 1 t sin pi x by 2 L and theta dot after differentiating this I can write root 2 by I L a 1 omega 1 cos omega 1 t minus b 1 omega 1 sin omega 1 t sin pi x by 2 L with the initial condition t is equal to 2 second theta x 2 is theta 1 and theta dot x 2 is theta dot 1. So this is substituted whatever we found earlier and to find out this uh, a1 and b1 we need to formulate two equations and then we can solve. So general procedure is uh, multiply the equations with this mode shape function and also we associate um, inertia term so that our mass normalized mode shapes utilized in orthogonality condition can be applied. So with that technique we multiply the above two equation we have first taken the first equation so first one of the above two equation is multiplied by i root root over 2 by i l sin pi x by 2 l and then integrate. So this i is taken only for convenience to observe the directly the orthogonality relationship. So from that after substituting theta 1 as this theta x2 equal to 2 by i l t naught by omega 1 square 1 minus 2 omega 1 sin pi x by l. Here we can write it and then we use the orthogonality condition. So after using this orthogonality condition the left hand side of this equation becomes because you can see here this is one function root 2 by i l and sin pi x by l then another mode shape function and i is there. So i phi x phi j x integration dx a here of course i equal to j that is 1. So result is 1. So ultimately we are getting the left hand side is simply a 1 sin 2 omega 1 plus b 1 cos 2 omega 2 omega 1 and right hand side is the integral of this i root 2 by i l t naught by omega 1 square 1 minus cos 2 omega 1 sin pi x by 2 l multiplied by the mode shape function root 2 i l sin pi x by dx. After carrying out this integration I will get this t naught by omega 1 right hand side into 1 minus cos 2 omega 1. Similarly taking the velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds we get this function uh, root over 2 by i l t naught by omega 1 sin 2 omega 1 sin pi x by 2 l and then substituting this in the velocity equation this is the velocity equation where the constants a1 and b1 are unknown. So we substitute this uh, theta 1 dot in the right hand side as root over 2 by i l t naught by omega 1 sin 2 omega 1 sin pi x by 2 l multiply above equation by i root 2 i l sin pi x by 2 l and integrate using orthogonality condition we will again get uh, the quantity here because of mass normalization scheme we will get this left hand side as a1 omega 1 cos 2 omega 1 minus b1 omega 1 sin 2 omega 1 equal to t naught by omega 1 sin 2 omega 1. Thus we get two equations which involves two unknown coefficients constants a1 and b1 and this can be solved simultaneously to get this value and then complete response is found. So let us solve it by Kramer's rule. If you apply the Kramer's rule then I first have to evaluate the determinant of the 
unknown constants. So unknown constants are B A1, B1 and their coefficients are written in the appropriate rows sin 2 omega 1 cos 2 omega 1 and then omega 1 cos 2 omega 1 minus omega 1 sin 2 omega 1 and its value is minus omega 1 after expansion. So A1 is this determinant. So first column is replaced by the non-homogeneous term that is t naught by omega 1 square into 1 minus cos 2 omega 1 and t naught by omega 1 sin 2 omega 1. This is the first column. Second column whatever coefficients was there in the expression that I have directly written cos 2 omega 1 minus omega 1 sin 2 omega 1. This is the determinant delta that we have already evaluated. So after carrying out this simplification we found that a1 equal to t naught by omega 1 square sin 2 omega 1. Similarly we get b1 equal to t naught by omega 1 square cos 2 omega 1. So two constants of integrations are found. So therefore uh, after finding constants a1 and b1 one can obtain the free vibration for t is equal to 2 seconds. t is equal to 2 seconds and after that. So I write this condition because t is equal to 2 seconds, the same value will be obtained if you put t is equal to 2 here or in the earlier expression. So the final result of free vibration is theta x t equal to root over 2 by i l into a1 sin omega 1t plus b1 cos omega 1t sin pi x by 2l. After putting the numerical value you can get this final result. So let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture uh, some typical problems are taken and the solution procedures are described in detail. First one is for determination of natural frequencies of an axially vibrating bar whose one end was fixed and other end was elastically restrained, elastically supported. Of course, the linear spring force relationship was taken. The second one is to find out the expression for free response of the bar under axial vibration, the bar being stressed uniformly and then released. Okay, so that problem we have taken only to apply the initial condition which was a linear function of x. The last problem that we have taken is to solve the torsional vibration problem of a bar subjected to rectangular pulse where the response was determined in two parts, one in the duration of the action of the pulse and the other when the pulse is released or pulse ceases to act. So in that case the free vibration response predominates and we have split up the response into two parts. First part is the in the duration of the pulse and second part after the pulse is removed. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.